Ahoy, Bryce here from Brighter Training, and today I'll be discussing leadership, the brain, and memory. Let's be honest, leadership is a lot more complicated than just nailing that grand strategy document, and ultimately it's about people. And people are driven by brains that sometimes forget misinterpret or completely rewrite reality. Having some basic understanding of how the brain works and how we form memories can help us to overcome these challenges. So today, we're going to unpack the neuroscience of learning, memory and emotion to show how leaders can use it to make a difference in their business. Let's start with the basics. Your brain has about 85 billion neurons, and each one connects through synapses with potentially thousands of other neurons. Every decision, every meeting, every email you read or send, it's all neurons firing and wiring. And here's the leadership link. Those neurons don't work in isolation. They're shaped by context. Stress, culture, environment, and relationships change how the brain structures and functions. Let's move now to the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic system triggers fight or flight, which is great if you're being chased by a lion and not so great if you're just being chased by your manager for a late report. When leaders create pressure, they can create a stress response that may cause the brain to shut down creativity and problem solving abilities. Oh, and just a quick note when it comes to stress. Not all stress is bad. There are two forms of stress. Distress, which is the bad one we want to avoid. The other form is eustress. This is the type of stress you feel when coming up against a challenge that is within your capability to solve. And you get a nice little dopamine kick when you do. Now, coming back to the parasympathetic system, which does the opposite, that is referred to as rest and digest. When leaders create environments of psychological safety, people's brains have the freedom to access creativity, memory, and innovation. So next time you raise your voice in a meeting, remember, you're not motivating creativity and innovation, you're shutting it down. Now, let's talk memory. Memory doesn't work like a filing cabinet or a computer. Your brain stores information all over the place. And what's really interesting is that every time we recall something, we reconstruct it. And that reconstruction can be influenced by emotions. Emotions act like highlighters, helping memories to be stored more vividly. And people don't simply remember what you said, they remember how you made them feel. That's why some leadership moments stick and others don't. If you frame change with fear, people's brains tag that memory with threat. If you frame it with hope and clarity, the same message is stored with opportunity. Think of it this way. Your team won't remember all the elements of the quarterly report, but they'll remember the feeling of being dismissed or inspired in that meeting. Have you ever sat in on an important presentation at work that was so boring you forgot what it was all about while the presenter was still speaking? I know, I have. And that's not our fault. That's neuroscience in action. Forgetting is functional. It helps avoid overload and keeps memory useful for guiding future predictions. So. How do leaders make the most of what we know about the brain? Here are some powerful insights. Nelson Cohen will tell you that the brain can only hold four plus or minus one items in working memory, and it lasts up to about 30 seconds. Overload it and it crashes, like too many applications open on your laptop. Leaders need to chunk information and keep it focused. If you are having a performance discussion with a member of your team, don't give them 20 things to work on and then send them on their merry way. Structure an approach to improve their performance by building on their previous knowledge a couple of steps at a time. People rarely learn by hearing something once. 
Improve their opportunity to learn by asking them to recall, use and apply their learning. That's why questions, discussions, role plays and quick quizzes work better than endless PowerPoint presentations. Ask team members to repeat back what you have said in their own words. It's not only helpful for their learning, but you will also quickly discover if they are listening to you or not. Your brain's emotional center, the limbic system, decides what gets stored and what gets ignored. If people don't feel safe, respected or engaged, their brains literally block learning. Positive emotional connections, on the other hand, make lessons stick. Leaders who create psychological safety are not just building trust. They are unlocking their team's ability to learn, solve problems and perform at their best. If your team feels supported, they'll not only remember more, but they will also apply it when it counts. This is critically important for everyone. Sleep has so many benefits. It aids with immune system response, helps regulate your hormones, and allows the brain to consolidate memories and learning during sleep. A tired, stressed team isn't just cranky. They literally can't learn, perform, or problem solve with any great effect. So yes, encouraging breaks, exercise, and proper rest during the workday can boost your team's performance. You can now officially tell your manager that finishing work on time or having a quick nap during the day isn't you just being lazy. It's a neuroscience approved productivity strategy to help you perform at your best. Now, let's take this science and make it real. Neuroplasticity means the brain is constantly reshaping itself. Every conversation, every email, every meeting is either strengthening a pathway or allowing it to fade. Think of it like walking through a field. The more often you take the same path, the clearer and easier it becomes. In the same way, repeated positive interactions between a leader and their team hardwire trust, confidence and resilience. Repeated negative ones, however, carve deep grooves of fear and avoidance. So how can leaders use this day to day? Start meetings with a simple retrieval exercise. Ask people to share one key takeaway from the last session or one success they've had applying what they've learned. This doesn't just check engagement. It strengthens the memory trace. When presenting complex information, weave it into a story. Storytelling taps into emotion, which acts like a spotlight on memory, making the lesson more likely to stick. And don't underestimate the power of pacing. Short focused bursts of discussion and activity beat long marathons of passive listening. It respects the limits of the working memory and makes attention a renewable resource. The takeaway is simple. As a leader, you don't need to be a neuroscientist. But when you understand how the brain learns, remembers and forgets, you can design interactions that don't just pass information along. They change behavior and build lasting capability. Okay, it's time to wrap this all up. Leadership isn't just all about managing process or creating the perfect position description. It's about shaping the emotional and cognitive environment where your team's brains can thrive. Your words, your tone, your timing, and the emotional climate you create don't just motivate people in the moment. They literally rewire their brains, shaping how they see challenges, how they approach problems, and how they remember you. So here's my challenge to everyone watching. What kind of neural networks are you fostering in your team? Because when people look back, they won't say, my greatest leader was the one that yelled at me all the time. They'll remember the leader who created safety, clarity, trust and understanding, and maybe even a laugh or two along the way. Thank you.